Question number 11. Two ordinary fair dice are rolled. For part 8 we need to complete the tree diagram. So we've got two columns. The first column represents the first dice being rolled and the second column um, represents the second dice being um, rolled. So as we complete the um, tree diagram I've got a 1 in 6 chance or a 1 sixth of a chance of getting a 4. So that means that not to get a 4 must be 5 sixths of a chance. OK, now these events are independent from each other so it doesn't matter what happens on the first dice, it's not going to affect what happens on the second dice. So the probabilities here on the second dice, well that's still going to be 5 sixths. So that's if I get a 4 on the first dice a 4 on the second dice is going to be 1 6 and not 4 is going to be 5 6 and it's going to be the same over here. doesn't matter what happens on the first dice, it's not going to affect what happens on the second dice. OK, so that's the probability tree diagram completed. Part B says circle the probability that both dice land on 4. So I need it to be a 4 and another 4. So I'm looking for the probability of 4 and another 4 and that's going to be equal to 1 sixth times 1 sixth which is equal to 1 36 so it's going to be that probability there and for part C we're asked to work out the probability that at least one of the dice does not land on a 4 so that could be this here 4, not 4, at least 1 doesn't land on a 4 there. Not 4, 4, at least 1 doesn't land on a 4 there. Not 4, not 4, at least 1 does not land on a 4 there. So because all of our probabilities must sum to 1 for all of those outcomes, I can work out the probability at least 1 does not land on 4 by doing 1, so that's all of the probabilities, take away the probability that both land on a 4. So 1 take away 1 36 and that's going to be 1 take away 1 36 is going to be 35 36. So over here I can put 35 36. Okay, question number 12. We're given this um, equation here, a is equal to x take away 4 times x take away 3 all over x times x take away 1. We need to work out the value of a when x is equal to negative 1. So I could simply sub negative 1 into here. So that tells us that a must be equal to negative 1 take away 4, which is going to be negative 5. And we're going to times that by a negative 1 plus 3. Negative 1 plus 3 is 2. I'm going to divide that by, well x is negative 1, so I can have a negative 1 there. I'm just going to pop it in brackets. And then we've got a negative 1 take away 1, which is negative 2. OK, so negative 5 times 2 is a negative 10 negative 1 times negative 2 is 2 and negative 2 divided by 2 gives me negative 5 so my answer here is going to be negative 5 ok for part b um, when x is greater than 2 but less than 4 we need to decide which of these is going to be true so is a going to be positive, negative, 0 or could it be any of those things OK, so let's have a look at each of the um, separate numbers here that are being multiplied together for each of these cases. So um, if we start by looking at the um, numerator here, x take away 4. So if x was something between 2 and 4, this here is always going to be negative. So if I take away um, 4 from anything between 2 and 4, I'm always going to be in, I'm always going to get a negative answer. Remember this is a strict on inequality so x can't actually be 4 so that's never going to be 0. That bit there is always going to be negative. So I'm just going to put a negative 
there. Okay, the um, second bracket here, well, if x is anything between two and four, we're just adding three to it. So um, that's definitely always going to be positive. If we have a look at the denominator, my x value, well, it's just gonna be something between two and four. So that's definitely gonna be positive. And over here, um, x take away one, if I subtract one from anything between two and four, it's gonna stay positive. Okay, so we're going to have a negative multiplied by a positive, which is definitely going to give us um, a negative answer. And that's going to be divided by a positive times by a positive, which is definitely going to be a positive answer. And a negative divided by a positive is definitely going to give us a negative answer. Okay, so that means that A doesn't matter what value I choose between two and four, a is definitely always going to be negative. Question 13. AC is a diagonal of the kite, of the kite ABCD. Um, A is the point 0.15 and C is the point 0.31. The diagonals of the kite intersect at M, which is the midpoint of AC. So let's mark on M. That's going to be there. That's point M. Okay, we're told that AM is equal to BM, so A to M is going to be equal to, in length to BM, and we don't know where B is yet, and we also know that BM to MD is in the ratio of 1 to 2, so we need to work out possible coordinates of B and D. So, um, because I know that AM is going to be equal to BM, I need to choose a place for B, that is going to be equidistant to this here. So this is going one to the left and two up. So I think if I go two to the right and one up, I think that a possibility is for B to be here because that distance is the same as that distance. Okay, so let's put B there. And we also know that BM to MD is in the ratio one to two. So that means if that's B to M is that length, then M to D is going to be twice that length. So I'm going to go one, two. And I think that that means that D is going to go over here because M D is twice the length of B M. Okay, and we can see that this does in fact, and I'll draw it in, um, we can see that this does in fact make us a kite. There we go, yeah, so we have actually got a kite um, there as well. Okay, so the possible coordinates then of BD, remember the, the, the more than one answer for this, um, well for point B I've got four, four, and for point D, I make it negative two, one. Okay. Part B, uh, this time we've got the vector x, y, um, that's given us three, two, which is this vector here. Um, three to the right and two up. We want to write down a vector that's the same size as x, y, but it's perpendicular to x, y. So the same size, but perpendicular. Okay, so this is going three to the right and two up. So I want to be going, I think, um, two to the left and th three up. Um, and that hopefully will give me something that is the same size and the um, color of that. Okay, so that should be the same size and it's also perpendicular. Okay, so it's the same size and it's perpendicular. That's a negative two, three. 